Jessica Payne, and welcome to the Brand Organics Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to tackle a question I get quite a bit because it's kind of at the core of what I do, and it's about social media. So today I'm going to answer the question, or, or attempt to answer the question, how to inspire action on social media. And um, if you've been, been paying attention to uh, you know, the headlines, you're, you're certainly seeing a very powerful, very vocal, um, and in, in, in some cases, a very inspiring um, environment that social media can create amidst all other sorts of emotions. Um, so that got me thinking. I'm constantly talking to um, my colleagues and my clients about social media strategy, and I realized I hadn't done a podcast yet uh, telling you, kind of and sharing with you, what some of my best practices are. And I think when you put it into context of inspiring action, I think that is something that um, is a little bit more digestible versus talking, you know, social media strategy. So for the purpose of today's podcast, I'm going to walk you through a handful of ideas uh, that uh, I've given my clients. These are strategies that we're using right now. Some I've known for a while and some sort of with the new environment. Um, you know, now is the time for you to really try these strategies. So I'm going to speak to it in a way that anyone can understand today. Um, it's easy for me to, to talk really strategically uh, about um, social, but I think for the purpose of today, look, it's it's something we all understand because most of us are on social media in some form. And I love reminding myself of the fact uh, to keep to keep you know what I'm sharing with you really, really simple because at the end of the day, I want to make sure what I share with you is something that you can, as soon as you finish the podcast, you can start doing on your own. And that's the goal. So I've got about five or six just tips that I wanted to share with you. And again, the question is how to inspire action using social media. And chances are, if you run a business or a personal brand, or maybe you don't and you have your own, you'd, you'd like to improve the quality of, of, you spending your time on social media and perhaps want to inspire something to happen, I think these tips are really going to work for you. And I think the more you kind of closely study them and play with them, you'll find they're actually a little bit more um, natural and organic and, and native to probably what you prefer to, to see and engage with on social than you might have realized. So the first uh, rule that I wanted to walk you through was, was, was pretty simple. Ask yourself what you want people to do. Or let's say if you're not working on behalf of a brand or a company, you don't necessarily want people to do something. Let's say you want to inspire them to do something. So before you jump on Twitter and start tweeting or, or studying everyone else and how they're marketing their business, just ask yourself that question. What is it that you want people to do? What do you want to inspire them to do? And this can be a very easy question to, to, to answer depending on what your needs are. Perhaps you want to raise awareness for a local event. Uh, perhaps you want to drive more visits to your website. Maybe on the flip side, it's, it's um, start conversations around a specific topic and kind of draw people organically to your Facebook page or your Instagram and just, you know, get more conversation going about something. Well, knowing how to answer this first question is really going to set you up for success for, um, for actually inspiring action. I myself am, have done this many times. I get really excited about a campaign. Um, I jump into social media and I just start to churn out content. It's what I really love to do the most. But if I don't remind myself that we've got one clear objective or two or three clear objectives on behalf of my client or my business, you know, you find yourself having created beautiful content. And when I say content, I mean things like posts or tweets or Instagram images. Um, you want to make sure that you spend all that time aligning all this beautiful stuff you're creating with a purpose. So again, the first question is, what is it that you want people to do? Because knowing the answer to that is going to help you stay focused in the, what types of posts or tweets or, or snaps, whatever con social media activity that you're going to be spending all your time doing, okay? So um, two things I always hear uh, kind of um, are the biggest challenges when it comes to social media. It's sort of like um, I'm spending way too much time. How do I cut down on the time that I'm using on social? And uh, how do I know that I'm coming from a place where I can add value? Those are the two biggest challenges. And um, I think answering this question is going to help focus, f just 
focus yourself. So I think that's going to contribute to less time, more focus time. And if you answer this question, you're already coming from a place of value. Okay, so that's kind of like a, a two in one. So that's the first question. Uh, something else you want to think about when 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 you do have a specific need or a reason why you're going out on social is a nice tip, uh, and this is kind of a tip for that first question, is think about what your call to action is. So a call to action is like when you provide a simple direction. You might actually see it in an actual post. You probably have when people say, share this, you know, share this post to raise awareness for uh, mental health, for example. Or um, do you have a story to share about uh, being a woman entrepreneur? Co leave a comment. Stuff you've probably seen in the groups you belong to, the Facebook uh, feeds you follow, whatnot. So those are little calls to action. And you'd be surprised how powerful they are when you actually include them in the post. It's funny. As, as independent as we like to believe we are as humans, sometimes simple direction actually gets us to do something. We kind of have to be reminded, oh, oh, right, to, to engage, I need to do this. So don't, don't use it um, overwhelmingly in every post, but think about, is there an opportunity along with your messaging to say, share this or visit our website at, and then literally spell out the website so people can click over. Um, don't feel like you need to cut corners when it comes to your call to action. Don't assume people know where to go, um, where to log on, where to sign up. So, so that's something very, very important. Again, so once you're able to answer that question, what you want people to do, think if you need to really, really clarify what people need to do. The next thing is, um, it's probably not surprising again, if you're on social media, you kind of get a sense that there's a lot more imagery in movies and you probably engage with more of the media rich, we call it, content than maybe just the written content. Um, so my, my second tip is think about using powerful imagery uh, and messaging combined together. That's aligned with your audience's values. And why I say that is it's one thing to post a beautiful picture um, or some amazing text, but if it's not aligned with what your audience cares about, they're not going to respond to it. So you could write this beautiful post, and if it's not aligned, you, you're, what you're going to see is kind of low engagement. People aren't going to be responding to it the way you want them to. So if you're going to put all that time into finding, um, if you're going to put all that time into creating um, the perfect post, you know, make sure you invest it in actually making sure that the messaging, what you're conveying, and the image you choose is aligned. And I think the perfect example of when this um, doesn't happen is is when you see, I don't know if you've ever heard of stock imagery or stock photos, and these are kind of more business related. You sometimes see it in business media too, but although they're getting better, you see this kind of stiff corporate stuff shirt, these kind of stage shots, these, these really cold kind of office setting or maybe even stereotypical settings, and they kind of make you cringe because they're not real. They're not authentic. And now you're seeing a trend where even more kind of warmer imagery, where people are smiling, but you still get a sense that they're kind of staged. Um, data is showing that consumers are engaging with that less and less. So a really interesting trend is like, it doesn't even have to be the perfect shot. It can be just a casual image of people really engaged or really laughing or really dancing or, you know, really collaborating. But there is definitely a sense of, of authenticity around it. So the second tip is, you know, think about, you know, using powerful imagery and messaging combined. That's aligned with the values of your audience. OK, because they're going to they're going to recognize that. And if you're in alignment with them and what they care about, they're going to have a vested interest in what you have to say. So that's the second tip. In terms of the third tip, it's it's kind of thinking about, it's kind of a, a step further on the second tip. I always say post with your senses. In other, in other, um, in other words, take advantage of the five senses or, or think about, maybe this is easier, how you respond when you see just some amazing, um, social media content out there. A perfect example is this. Um, you know, if you go to the National Geographic page on Facebook, you know that when the minute you click on it, you're going to see some incredible images. Whether it's um, baskets of spices in a bazaar or, um, you know, 
uh, an, a herd of elephants crossing the plains, you're going to be brought right into a situation where it's like it's it's really integrating um, your five senses, and that's why some of these images are unforgettable and not. N- it's no shocker that National Geographic is among the top most followed Facebook pages. It's because people love the images. And by the way, people love sharing and commenting on the images um, because it, it's just something that really tickles those five senses. I'm not saying shoot for a National Geographic image. What I'm saying is think about the best visual way to convey your story. You know, it, there's a reason why we love to watch those five-minute um, cooking uh, videos on, on Facebook, or we like to share, um, you know, very granular, handheld, but fun and authentic dance videos. You know, someone's holding it on their smartphone, and it's in some sort of dance studio, and you've got these kids dancing. The quality is low, but it's totally authentic. But you can hear the music. You can hear the laughter. You can see them dancing. It's this, the, All the senses are kind of engaged, right? So that's the type of content people people are looking for. So you don't have to make it perfect, but think about the most, the, the most visual way a compelling way that you can really engage people and think about those those senses. And if it's if it's easier for you, just think about the content that you love to interact with the most. For me, I love watching those cooking, those DIY cooking videos. So I just watched one on how to a 30 second fast forwarded video of how to make a seven layer dip. And I think I watched it like three times. Or like I'll watch a video on chocolate melting. It's like these things get millions of views for a reason. It's because um, people will engage with content that 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 um, really pulls at at their sentences at their senses. So the next step is really kind of um, th- this kind of goes. This is a marketing rule, but but I think on social media because it is social, it, it's especially important. And sometimes it's easy to forget. So again, we're talking about inspiring action and what people will are likely to engage with because you want them to engage, right? Whatever way you want them to. Make it worth their while. And the best way to do this is to either incentivize, which isn't always the case, but it definitely helps, and reciprocate. Okay, so let's talk about um, incentivizing first. Now, there's a reason why you always see these offers. And, and incentivizing doesn't mean constantly slap up promotional campaigns or coupon codes or, you know, so that every time they see you, you're trying to sell them something. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, you know, some things are easy and and casual and people are going to engage on social media based on their comfort level or sometimes how much they have to commit, right? Liking is easy. It's just one thumb tap. Sharing a little bit more, uh, they're going to share it and maybe write something a little bit more time. Typically, when um, something has really captured their attention or emotion or they feel it is of even more value, they'll like it and they'll share it. Commenting, that's a whole other tier when they want to publicly comment on something, okay? We've certainly seen a lot of comments. What What I'm getting at is behavior beyond sort of interacting with your social posts. Um, Sometimes the inspired action that you want to happen is for folks to kind of maybe travel away from social media. So come to your website and do something. Maybe it's sign up to your newsletter. Maybe you're just really hungry to get email addresses so that you can rally people around a cause. Getting email addresses and growing lists are a huge, um, a huge need, uh, I think, for every single one of my clients. Growing that list, working that list, right, is is a huge uh, marketing marketing strategy. For a lot of people, it's, it's, it's where they start growing fans. And the more people that they can engage with directly, um, the better. So for the purpose of this tip, let, let's pretend that um, the inspired action you want to take is for people to come visit your website or sign up to your newsletter. Perfect. This is very common. You've probably done this before. And if you have, you may have noticed. Typically, people are pretty wary about giving an email address. Some people, it's like they're they're one of two areas. Either they do right away, because they already have an affinity for your brand, and and maybe they're coming through social and they really trust you and they see something of value, or or second, they might be a little hesitant. I think people are just a little wary right now of handing over personal information because we don't want to get spammed. I feel the same way. So what you'll often see brands do is offer something in exchange, and it doesn't have to be a big thing. You'll see things like a free download. 
or you'll see things like a coupon code or maybe a first look or first or, or early access to a sale. Uh, you might even see, um, it depends on your interest, but you might even see um, an invite to um, an event, you know, the first 20 signups or whatnot. Uh, but typically, people, are, people then are willing to hand over their email, this coveted piece of contact information that every marketer needs, in exchange for something. So that's the point of this, of this exercise. So if you want to incentivize, just be prepared to offer something. You just need to make sure that it's of value to them. Okay, so, um, you know, it, if it's not, you're, you're just going to not see an engagement rate. Okay, so incentivizing is the first thing. The second thing is to reciprocate. And in a way, it's almost like you want to reciprocate, but you want to reciprocate before you have to. And let me explain. So the, the big rule of social media is you get more, the, the, you get more out of it the more you put into it, okay? Okay. Um, and uh, I think you'll see this, the, the, the best brands and most engaging brands, celebrities aside, uh, you know, the, the regular brands out there that tend to drive a lot of engagement are doing a couple of things really well. They're, they're responsive. They're constantly adding value. They are um, getting back to folks. Their customer service um, is responding, whether it's to complaints or praise. There's just always this feeling of them being present. But on top of that, they're reciprocating. They are, if they're giving kudos, they're giving kudos. If they're getting kudos, they're giving kudos back. They're exchanging in conversations. Sometimes you see them actually go one step further, and you can get a sense that they're proactively going out into the community, finding other kind of uh, similar brands, jumping into conversations, and just doing so much more than just posting their own their own content. And what ends up happening is they're then kind of seen as more of an ambassador, like a steward of like really good conversation on social media. And it's not just a nice idea. What it what it what it is is because as humans we're wired to respond. Um, more positively to things that we don't see as suspect or threatening. And, and that's why when, I don't know if you've ever seen, if you've gone on Twitter or you've gone on Instagram and you see a brand that has like a ton of followers and they like follow two people, it just, it just feels weird. And it's, um, it's, for me as a marketer, I'm always like, did they pay for those followers? How genuine is this engagement? But I think no matter where you are, it's like, that just, that just feels off. It feels like it's not being reciprocated. And I think at the end of the day, our, as human beings, we're wired to just not trust something that doesn't feel authentic. So I don't want that to be you. So again, it's incentivize where you can. Again, we're talking about inspiring action. And all of these things add up to um, your audience's perception of you as a brand, as a business. You know, do they trust you? Are you warm? Are you approachable? Do they value what you're, what you're sharing on social media? And you'll find that if they do, that's why they engage. And that's the whole reason um, for for this conversation. And again, it's so that all of your efforts aren't done in vain, right? Because at the end of the day, you're hoping to inspire some sort of action. Um, the last tip is really just around kind of a state of, a state of the state right now. Uh, keep in mind that most people, including myself, are a little jaded by social media right now. They're, they're overwhelmed. There's a lot of... Um, information, especially on places like Facebook. A lot of conversations are happening. Um, I'm starting to see and actually have conversations with clients about self-care, about setting boundaries of how much they're on social media. Um, personally, if I didn't have to do social media for a living, um, I probably would, would rarely be on it uh, uh, this, uh, this time of year. I say that, and then, of course, I, I, I watch a video and I'm inspired, you know, whether it's the Women's March and seeing so many people come together and the, and the powerful imagery of the 750,000 women marching um, in Los Angeles, or, you know, maybe it was the, you know, another powerful thing I watched uh, recently was when the New England Patriots did their, they won the Super Bowl. And so here they were parading down uh, through the streets of Boston. And, and a friend of mine was, was Facebook live, was broadcasting live on Facebook. So, you know, I, while some, some, some days you may be a little overwhelmed by social media, the next day may surprise you. Uh, but my, my whole point is just be cautious right now. Just be extra sensitive to how you're, how you're stepping forward on social media. Um, 
And, and I think if you just stick to your authentic roots and your story and how you want to add value and inspire action, I think you'll be fine. But just know that generally people as a whole are really picking and choosing where they spend their time on social media. So as long as you match what you're doing with the right channel, and that's where I'll close, uh, you'll have greater success of it. All right, that does it for me. There was a lot to cover in this episode, and I just wanted to kind of jam pack you with with these tips I've been giving other clients and, and colleagues. They work, and I think the overall message is if you want to inspire action through social media, just Again, just be authentic. Really put that thought up front into how you can add the most value. And then how can you tell it in a compelling way? Very, very simply um, with, with uh, using visuals, using imagery, using um, live streaming or powerful storytelling. So that does it for me. Uh, thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. If you have a, a, a general interest in this topic, social media, let me know. Because I'll be covering this in, in other podcasts. And I want to tailor it to your, your needs. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time on the Brand Organics podcast. If you have any questions or you want to get in touch with me or talk about today's show, you can find me on my website, which is jessicapayne.us, or on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.